Greetings, I hope this video finds you well, and welcome to part two of my dirt sprint car school in iRacing. Now, if you haven't watched part one, please go watch that first. It'll give you some basic driving techniques and instructions. As for part two, we're covering wings, the top wing and the nose wing. So the nose wing is the first adjustment we're going to make. There, it starts at 26 for the linear setup, if you're following along at home, and can go clear up to 30. That is the angle of the wing. Obviously, more angle in the wing puts more downforce on the nose of the car. Now, in iRacing, it's not super severe. It's more of a subtle and a preferential adjustment. Uh, so use this with your discretion. Your mileage may vary. But on this particular track, I do like a nose wing angle of 28 in the real sprint car. I always liked a little more nose wing angle anyways. It gave me a little more feeling in the front end. Now, this isn't going to unhook the car because it's not putting that much downforce on the nose. It's basically just keeping the nose of the car on the track. And especially in a 305, you do not have the speed that maybe a 360 or 410 will generate. And then on to the top wing, we can see we have been running a negative two for the wing angle. If you go to zero, that means that the wing has been pushed to the front as far as it can go on the top of the car. If it goes to a negative 10, that means the wing has been pulled back as far as it can go. This changes not only the relation of the wing position on the car itself, but also the wing angle because the bottom is typically dished on a sprint car wing. So you get a little bit of rake the further you pull the wing back. And then as you push the wing forward, it flattens out. So you have two things happening here. Now, when you push the wing forward, that unhooks the back end of the car. It makes it a little easier to turn. This is what you would typically do on a heavy or sticky, tacky track. Uh, when you pull the wing back, it's typically for a more, uh, what would we call it, a slicker track. It helps the entry of the corner. And I kind of liken it to a rudder. So wherever that top wing, that left sideboard is pointed, that's where your car is basically going to go. So we're going to pull the wing to the middle point, which is negative five. And we always did this in the big car because you may need an adjustment on the track. The track may change enough where you need to push the wing forward or push the wing back. If you already have the wing too far one direction or the other, and you got to pull it that direction, you've run out of adjustment. So there's really no reason to have the wing at a negative two. Let's do a negative five, and then we can see how the car drives. Now, we put a little more downforce on the front end. It's going to give us a little more secure feeling in the front end, but we've also pulled the wing back, which means it tightens the car up. Entries into the corner is going to be a little straighter, but the track has also dried out. So this combination is going to make the car, or it should make the car feel different but it should, in my opinion, make it a little more drivable into the corner. I'll go at the back again and then... Uh... Running low line this time? Yep, start out running low. And then you can see what the adjustments have done to the car. <laughs> that dirt squish noise. <laughs> Sorry, really? It's alright. You're fine. Woo! Split him. So again, everything's nice and smooth, rolling on the brake, rolling out of the throttle just a little bit.
I'm just using a little break. I'm rolling out of the throttle, and then I'm getting back into the throttle about anywhere from about a third to halfway through the corner. starting to get slick gotta make some adjustments with your line if you need to but still staying on the bottom of the track Now we can go ahead and switch to the high line. hear the car backfire that just means you're running out of gear does these like little pops going into the corner uh -huh. I'm not running fast enough to get that Again, I'm just flat foot and just using the brake, you know, keeping my left rear out of the dark stuff in the middle of the track, so to make sure I'm high enough. Um, and then I'm just flat foot and just dragging the brake going in, and then just touching it as needed throughout the corner. Oh, I see. so much that I just kind of went around you and then back up. A little target fixation. Yeah. It's not the first time Brandon's heard that. <laughs> right. Who's perfect? Oh. Okay. 
I was watching your line. Consistency, that's the hard part, right? Yep. <clears throat> I thought I was doing great. Smash the wall. Yeah, and again, running up there is not easy. Ooh, it's you know, if you if you, yep, it's getting slick, which is good. Um, but if you you know if you mess up going in just a little bit, and you don't know how to correct it, it it, <laughs> it gets tricky real fast. You know, if the car is just entering too straight, if you've made a mistake and you haven't drugged the brake enough, you know, go ahead and lift the throttle, get the car to rotate and get right back in it. If everybody's got a, you know, somewhat of a handle on that, we'll go and back into the pits and make another change here. Crack's getting a little slick. That's good. Okay, that's going to do it for part two of my dirt sprint car driving school in iRacing. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for part three. That'll be coming out in the next couple of days or so. You guys have been great. I've been strange. Take care, and I will see you in the next video.